Here comes Arnold. He's got some news to share with you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Gungans and Droids, welcome back to another episode of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. And today we have some great news to share with you. As you may have seen, four other YouTubers have shared some amazing new things coming to the game that is supposed to increase the overall quality of life. And today I have the fifth installment that I want to share with you. Electronic Arts has been super nice and grateful. They sent me this information and they asked that I go ahead and tell you what is new and coming your way. So let's go ahead, get right into it and talk about the three things that you got to know about this next upcoming update. Now, in case you don't know what quality of life means, all that is is the little things that make the game just a lot better and a lot more enjoyable to day-to-day -to -day routines. And the first thing I want to talk about is Galactic War. For a long time, people have said it's too boring. It's too hard. The rewards just aren't there. Well, the developers heard you and they went ahead and made some changes to how Galactic War works nowadays. The main changes that happen to Galactic War are pretty much reward increases across the board. For example, you will now see more credits and more training droids through your journey from node 1 to node 12 all the way through. I'm right now showing the differences between the old Galactic War rewards and the new ones, and you may be noticing that now we get ship currency and ship training droids all the way through from Battle 1 to Battle 12, and that will really help you out when you need to level up your ships, get them to the next star count, and all those little day-to-day -day things that you do on ships. One of my favorite things that is in Galactic War is the fact that you can get shards of a character outside of Battle 12. You might get it within your first six battles, and that is really great. Seeing those shards just makes your day just a little bit brighter and especially once you get to that last battle you will see three shards of a character to drop and they added new characters to the rewards list so you might get characters like commander cody echo scarif rebel pathfinder and other characters of that sort so that is also a great minor thing that just makes it a little bit more rewarding for going through all those 12 battles one thing to note is that the crystals and galactic war currency has maintained constant so if you look at the screenshots you will notice that crystals and galactic Galactic War currency is not changing at all from the previous Galactic War rewards that we've had in the past. The next thing on our list is the shipments update and I'm going to pass it over to Gary and he can tell you what is new about shipments. Thanks for that Arnold. Well, you guys may know that every single time the game refreshes you would go in, go to the daily shipments, get what you need, back out, go to the guild shipments, get what you need, you back out, go to Galactic War shipments, back out, squad arena shipments, back out, then you go to fleet shipments, well, that is no more, toss that memory out of your mind, because now, everything can easily be accessible in any given shipment you're in. If you're in the daily shipments, you can easily hop between Galactic War, Squad Arena, the Guild Store, as well as everything else. And this works no matter what type of shipment you are in. So another minor thing, but it really does go a long way to make things a lot simpler on your day-to-day -day routine. Gary signing off and sending it back to Arnold. Thank you for that, Gary. Let's go ahead and get on to our last topic. And hold your shorts, guys. Get a drum roll for me, please. For the longest time, we've been asking for this, and it's finally happened. Tebow is getting fixed. A lot of you guys know Tebow is super bugged in the past. And for example, as you might be seeing in the gameplay, especially for the raid, which is his bread and butter, there are times when he's supposed to be stealthing for quite a couple turns, but the stealth expires right away. The reason why that was happening is because when Tebow is leading, he gives stealth at random, but when he uses Ewok Scramble Tactics, at time that leader ability can go ahead and overwrite the time you're supposed to stay stealth under Ewok Scramble Tactics. The game now tracks all that separately and no stealth is going to override the previous one. So that means if you're supposed to stay stealth for 3-4 turns, you will stay stealth for 3-4 turns and Tebow's leader ability will not reset that to only a 1 turn stealth. So that is great and now if you're a free to play player or just starting off in the game, Tebow is a super solid character to get because now he is supposed to be working as expected. So very happy to hear that. On the same topic of stealth, we also have changes to where Taunt takes precedence over stealth. So let's say you're taunting, stealth is not going to erase that taunt, but the game is still going to be counting both buffs side by side. So it's going to count the timer on both of them. So let's say your stealth is longer than your taunt. Once your taunt naturally goes away, stealth comes up and that takes precedence as long as taunt is not in place. 
So all across the board, it seems like Stealth is getting changes and finally, Tebow is getting the loving that he's been needing for such a long time. But there you have it guys, those are the top three things you need to know from this video. And if you're interested in seeing the other news related to this that came out this week, I will put videos of each and every one of the YouTubers, so click on that video if you want to learn more about that particular update. So guys, thanks for tuning in, and as always, for more Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes content, make sure you like this video, subscribe, and we will talk again soon. Peace out.